So I'm here with uh, Ben Curry, 11-time MVP, CISSP, and uh, one of the owners of Summit 7 Systems. Uh, ben and I are getting together to kind of talk a little bit about one of the domains near and dear to our hearts, uh, and that is media protection, and that is a domain within CMMC. I probably should have said that before, but nevertheless, media protection, otherwise known as MP. So we're going to have a real small talk about this and focus kind of on just maybe a couple of practices and talk about how does it apply to cloud systems, storing CUI in the cloud, namely it be Microsoft 365 or Azure, et cetera. So without further ado. You know, thanks, Sean. Yep. As always. Uh, it's kind of helpful when we think about media protection to kind of think about these in order and to MP.3.122 is uh, – it's kind of where we start here, and that's really the, the basics here about marking media uh, with necessary CUI markings. You know, if you just read the control itself, uh, the control says mark media with necessary CUI markings and distribution limitations. Sounds fairly straightforward. There's no reason to make it complex, but it's a little deeper than that. Uh, I'm looking here at the uh, CMC verbiage here on the discussion, and it says, you know, human readable security attributes, including digital and non-digital media, so think about analog, CDs, DVDs, um, uh, punch cards, because it does say analog data. So if you still have a computer around and you're storing CUI and punch cards in some way, uh, do you do that? If you use eight-track tapes to record some of your CUI meetings, for example, with customers, uh, that's analog, and you still have to mark those eight-track tapes. So you'd have to put a C proper CUI label on those. Most of this is done for us. So when you think about like the, the Microsoft data center, uh, they do use some media in the data center, but that is all handled by them. They are, uh, you know, FedRAMP high in both commercial and gov, and they are um, 800-53 compliant. So beyond 800-171, right? So all the way to 800-53. So when it comes to marking media, you know, if you read the control, most of it is about a physical label. If you go out to NARA, N-A-R-A, um, it, it actually, they have the purple CUI labels now. They've been approved, and you can actually see them, and you can buy them. They have some that will go on a thumb drive, and they have some that go, you know, on a, on a larger drive as well as, as one that goes on like a binder, if you have something in a binder. And so they've taken some of that CUI marking. It's kind of easy to go get it and just print it out and tape it. There's companies now selling those labels, um, you know, marking it with the, those markings and distribution limitations. When you look at like MP2.119, though, it talks about protecting the those media, right? So 122 is about marking it. Yes, it's important. Yes, you have to have it do it. I know I don't think a phone is media because it's called out as a mobile device elsewhere. So I know some people are marking their phones with CUI. I don't like that because if now I have my phone out or my laptop marked to CUI, I think it's a mistake. Um, it's not called out. I don't think it's mandatory. And the problem with that the is over labeling. I guess I'm right? sitting in an airport. Does anybody remember what that was like? Sitting in the airport lounge, you know, and now they're looking. Oh, this contains CUI. Right. I've never liked the government. I know we don't have a choice, but it says the labels. This is a DOD. I'm like, it's like steal me, China. Mm -hmm. So. So let's take a look at MP2119. So, you know, a little bit different here. It really is talking about um, how we protect uh, those the, what's on the media as well as the media. Now, I think part of the control is where do you, you know, store it in a safe place, a locker, a room. Uh, but also, is that an encrypted device? Now, CMC is, is, is explicitly called out that it has to be FIPS, FIPS 140-2 compliant. Mm -hmm. So for encryption. For encryption. So you cannot have CUI on a drive that does not have FIPS 1 and 40-2 encryption. Uh, I believe that 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, this gets into a little bit of a conversation around, you know, is this, does that mean I have to encrypt the container? Right? I can enable what's called FIPS mode in Windows 10. If you don't have it on, take a look at it. You probably need to have it on. Uh, what it does is it prevents any non-FIPS encrypted device from plugging in your machine to ensure, you know, that we've met this control. Well, some people will say, well, what if I use like an AIP or a unified labeling and I'm going to encrypt at the item level? Well, I've met the control. 
I agree with that as well. I, I think we have met that control at the item level. I think what we really should do, though, is and do both. I, if you look at modern cloud architecture and security, we're very much trying to control and secure items that way because it's so fluid. Mm -hmm. There's email and there's cloud and there's sync and there's so many accidental ways uh, and information does flow. So email is a big one. So I think controlling, and this theme goes this theme goes through. I think a lot of the other controls is container level plus item. Uh, and, and so going beyond that, <clears throat> is that kind of going into uh, some of the other practices within level two, like two dot one two zero that you know necessitates that you limit access to CUI on on system media. And specifically well, to authorize users, and these do flow together. There's a they do. There's a ton of overlap. They probably could have did this in one control, okay. <laughs> one or two controls. They did call these out, but I think limiting access to CUI on system media, absolutely. So encrypting the device, I think, is the first way. Uh, I highly, we highly recommend that you encrypt the item level as well, in case that document gets you know out, out of your network accidentally. That way, you're still compliant. And are you doing this with AIP or unified labeling? So, you know, I, our preferred method is to stay within the Microsoft stack whenever possible in the okay. cloud. It, it's going to be easier. It's, you've licensed it. You're paying for it. So instead of buying a mobile iron, and buy, there's nothing wrong with mobile iron. I love mobile iron. You know, it's a great product, but it doesn't integrate as neatly with the 365 package. So, you know, we use Intune primarily, you know, SCCM. Uh, what's now coming out is Endpoint Manager, slowly re gobbling up Intune. Uh, and so we do things like on a Windows machine, we enforce BitLocker to make sure that we have FIPS 140-2 on the machine. Uh, it uses a TPM chip in the BIOS to ensure compliance. Same on a Mac, uh, we use File Vault. Keep those encrypted as well. Also push through Intune. Um, mobile devices, an Apple device is already encrypted. Um, it's really hard to get anything from Apple. Mm -hmm. And then the risk really comes in on an Android, and that's really only a Samsung Knox right now. Uh, last night we checked, and this could change, but had the FIPS um, open SSL FIPS module. So, and I'm going to end on this note here, I think, sure, and yeah. then we can talk a little bit about it. But we know this from DCMA audits our clients have undergone. We've worked with them on. Uh, Non-Samsung Knox devices may or may not have an open SSL FIPS library. Let me tell you what that really means. When we go into Microsoft Intune and we say, if you've got CUI inside of Word, PowerPoint, OneDrive on that mobile device, uh, we need we say, oh, encrypt it. Well, that's great. The problem is if you're on a, I don't want to call out names of devices, some other, you know, pixie fairy kind of devices, mm -hmm. well, they use the open SSL library for encryption and Microsoft's application will leverage that and you do are encrypted, you're not compliant. If that device, say like a Samsung with Knox, you say, hey, my, you know, use Intune, I'm going to encrypt it. That has the OpenSSL FIPS library, which is a different than just the OpenSSL library. And then so that way we know we're compliant. They will find you on a DCMA audit. I know we have two clients that just got hit with this um, on a handful of old devices, and they just had to remove them. There was no answer. There is no way to fix it, in other words. Gotcha. So just an interesting tidbit there on protecting, you know, you know, CUI on media. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks, Sean.